Hello, my name is Walter Unglob, and this is gyro compass theory. So a gyro compass works on the principle of a gyroscope. It's different than a conventional magnetic compass because a magnetic compass depends on the external magnetic field generated by the Earth, but a gyro compass doesn't need that. All you need is a gyroscope, which is some mass spinning about a certain axis relative to the axis of rotation of the planet you're on, such as Earth. The Earth will have a geodetic north and south pole, and you can write down an equation and solve that equation for the uh, dynamics of the variables, such as the angles and uh, rotational velocities of your gyro compass. This is extremely useful for uh, navigation purposes in satellites and also other uh, equipment. So you can start out with writing down the Lagrangian for your system. This is what's typically done in classical mechanics, which is going to be equal to your kinetic energy term minus your potential energy term. Here, we only have to really concern ourselves with the kinetic energy. The Lagrangian for such a gyroscope is going to be given as one half times the angular velocity vector transposed times the moment of inertia tensor here I'll write this as a matrix times once again the angular velocity vector now before I go further I just want to denote a few different angles that we're going to be using for describing the angular velocity of this coordinate system for this uh, gyroscope and the moment of inertia. So these angles will be alpha, which is an angle of rotation about the zenith axis. And I also will have an angle delta, which is an angle that describes the co-latitude so this is the co-latitude angle. And then I'm going to have an angle psi, which represents an angle of rotation about the axis of symmetry. And finally, I have capital omega, which will represent rotation about the north-south axis of the rotating planet. So. I will call this rotation about the north-south axis. Now the inertia, inertia tensor can be given in terms of two inertias. Inertia 1, which is the rotational inertia of the mass spinning about this axis, and that will be in one dimension, and then I have two other dimensions to worry about because generally this is a three-dimensional physical system. I have my z-axis, my x-axis, and my y-axis. And each of these dimensions are orthogonal to each other. So if I assume symmetry about the two other axes, then the rotational inertia in those two other dimensions are going to be the same, and I'll just label them I2. So I have my inertia tensor here for the rotation of this gyroscope. And now I'm going to write down the explicit form for the angular velocity vector in terms of all of these angles and rotational rates. So this angular velocity vector will have three components, a component in the direction of the axis about which it's rotating, the gyroscope, and then the two other directions for x and y. So the first element of my angular velocity vector will be equal to the time derivative of psi minus omega times sine delta times cosine alpha. the second component of the vector will be equal to alpha dot 
So the dot, again, represents the time derivative of that angle, times sine of psi, minus, sorry, plus omega, and I'm just going to use cosine theta. I'm just going to use c of theta as shorthand for cosine of theta, and s of theta for shorthand for sine of theta, just to save some space. So again, the second element of my angular velocity vector is equal to alpha dot times sine psi plus omega times cosine of delta times sine of psi plus sine of delta sine of alpha cosine of psi and finally, the third element of my angular velocity vector that appears in the Lagrangian is going to be equal to alpha dot cosine of psi plus omega times cosine of delta cosine of psi minus sine of delta sine of alpha, and finally, sine of psi. So this is a complicated looking expression, but that's because there are various coordinate transformations that have to take place in terms of these various angles to properly describe the dynamics uh, of this gyroscope and of this gyro compass. And if you can solve for the equations of motion with this Lagrangian, then you can utilize that knowledge to determine a way to navigate relative to the north-south axis of a rotating planet. My name is Walter Unglob, and this is Gyro Compass Theory.